What's up, guys? I got another episode of Build Beauties today, and of course, I have a guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, guys. My name is Axel. You guys also know me as the Degenerate Turles player, and I'm here with the Turles list. Yeah. So, of course, uh, a lot of people have like known Axel through playing on the Octagon events, uh, specifically running Oppressive Turles, and we're going to kind of like go in and dissect his little his build a bit but i'm gonna have him kind of explain it all to me so go ahead if you want to tag away why you chose oppressive with turles specifically um i was looking to possibly bring turles back into the meta because whenever i was initially getting back into the game i realized it was more combat heavy and economy and action economy based so i wanted to kind of try and find like a natural mold for turles to actually be in this meta because Back then, whenever Turles had Ruthless and he was one of the only like true beatdown MPs, his unpreventable damage was like insane. And if you drew one bad combat against Turles, uh, you're pretty much dead. So he relies on a big, big play on the luck factor as well. But with deciding the mastery, I ultimately chose Sam because of clinch support. Clinch support was just too good to not like abuse and try and make good for Turles. And the mastery choice, I originally was thinking about rampaging because of the discard effect to uh, get more clinch attacks. But I ultimately chose oppressive because of the skip action ability. The skip action, the ability to hand filter, and also the ability to like keep uh, your opponent losing stages as well as regenerating your own cards. I think oppressive is like the true Saiyan mastery because it's literally like based on combat and it wants it wants to take damage so that it can rejuve and like keep your opponent losing stages and keep that momentum in your favor so yeah choosing oppressive was mainly just for the draw power and discard power as well as you can see like yep. a lot of my cards in my deck utilize the discard effect like same inspection drill uh where's the other one oh battle pausing as well and in, in a way but yeah, if I ever draw a discard inspection drill, I'm going to be at advantage. And the draw discard also helps for all of the current dead cards that I have that I can't do anything with in combat. So hmm. um, that's that's another reason is like my, I want to keep entering combat. Like don't give a moment to breathe and don't allow like any allies, board, Dragon Balls or anything to get set up. So that's also why I run the Oppressive uh, Mastery because it's just constant entering combat it gives you also the stage gain as well is super good once neutral level two comes out i'm going to test that out and see how it works in this build but until then i you just want to stay at level one and you can just keep gaining your stages back which allows me to throw the two energy attacks that i have that cost stages which can be kind of a problem if you're just looking to go face you you're, you're gonna go against another like heavy beat down deck and lose your stages so you want to like have room to save for them but getting the getting the first skip will always give you stages so that's one thing that you can rely on if you ever want to be able to get an energy attack out or whatever but yeah that's that's ultimately my choice with oppressive i really love this mastery the skip action is too good and there's no there's literally no like counters for skip outside of on the move and that's the only card i think yeah yeah that's true uh oh Majin Vegito too uh, hmm. does turn off the mastery uh essentially okay. but uh but you know so yeah. with with that in, in mind you know we talk about the same clinch you do have a fair amount of cards that uh don't use cl i mean don't get the modifier from clinch like mm -hmm. outright um we can touch those in a sec but we just kind of like run through i mean a lot of this is just kind of standard clinch build with with some with some splash but uh given turlis you know napa would look very different napa has a lot of the freestyle cards um have you considered ever running freestyle, more freestyle attacks that are like the, the clinch support for this? Uh, not really, because they don't utilize with the mastery. Um, running non-styled attacks, I tried looking at stuff like debilitating volley for the anti-anger and the fact that it, that could get doubled and like other stuff here and there, but nothing really appealed to me. Like I don't run like other cards that should be run for clinch support like that. Um, the one that lets you search it from the discard pile, I just yep. I decided to take that one out because usually I've gotten saying clinch out most of the time, or I can get it out some other way. I don't need like that card, which isn't going to get me an attack and clinch at the same time. So 
uh, the, the freestyle cars, I, I wasn't too, too into. What I liked more about the Saiyan cars is that the only two that, uh, the only three that don't get AT, that don't get clinch support are body blow, grab, and uh, gut kick. Body grab, body blow just gets me clinch, which is all it's there for. Um, Saiyan gut kick allows me to like keep uh, abusing the skip action, and it's like the only physical attack that does it. Yeah. And doesn't cost stages, so I can just get that little extra bit of stage damage. Your opponent keeps skipping an action. And then saying grab is just good for the draw utility and the fact that it can't that it can become a five stage attack that can't be stopped. Yeah, the so. saying grab is is the interesting one. Uh, I suppose a lot of time people are gonna let it hit because they're worried about a bigger attack, like clench supported attack hitting. Yes, but with, but with that, like it just it just keeps allowing me to draw more cards and get more advantage, which is why I run those three, which don't get supported by clinch, but they are still good utility nonetheless. Interesting. My, my regular clinch support, though, is is the standard stuff, but I decided to add these two into the mix. I chose, say, a Massacre over... Um, what's the... Sand the Dive. Not Sand Dive, no, the Kick. Sand oh, uh, kick. kick. Spin Kick. Yeah. For the for the ally support and the anti anger one because say a massacre did it better and two because it's a six life card attack so i'm guaranteed crits from it if there's no modifiers on the field and i hit with this card and most people don't expect energy attacks coming from a turtles build they think it's all just going to be physical beats so it's good for throw off the board control which this deck uh, suffers a lot from good board control is the main issue so i need that for ally and setup hate and then sand energy outburst i put in for discard hate because of stare down uh, mischievous mastery i don't i don't remember which mps make you discard oh raditz yeah yeah, yeah. Raditz was the issue so just not just being really like cautious about the draw and discard meta that's coming in i want to be able to like protect my hand because i'm literally just trying to dump everything out before i let you take a turn so energy outburst is good it doesn't cost any stages and yeah. it gets clinch support so you can do six life in four stages which can become 10 if you play it outright um yeah, i still love that card with empowered quite a bit i i really haven't seen people play it as much for the longest mm -hmm. time um, which is a real shame because it is a very 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 strong card it is like the it stops stare down it stops the masteries so it's especially if you get caught with a show with a showdown drill on the field, which which is that that it that card is this deck's nightmare. Yeah. Okay. But I run a lot of support to try and get that off the field, but we'll get to that support in a second. Uh back crash is a staple in any clinch deck and probably should be like in any physical saiyan deck at all, just because of the rejuvenation effect. It gives me crits whenever I need them, and if I can set them up in my discard pile to uh, use oppressive mastery as an action to get the rejuve. Uh, saying crunch also super good staple because I'm since I'm going to be in combat so much, I want to draw this card because I'm expecting to take a lot of damage. As you can see, I only run four blocks. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, pretty very, very light on the block counts. Um, one thing with the crunch, uh, I, not to give too much away from our games <laughs> playing though, uh, I know that being able to selectively kind of tune what you're going to rejuvenate with your mastery is one of the big strengths with this with this card as well also just the fact that it's uh it's a toolbox card really it gives you whatever you want mm -hmm. and there's a lot of the i think most of the attacks of the deck aren't banished after use i've noticed i think i believe grab and uh body blow are the only banished after use ones i think mm -hmm. yeah uh and the then quick a uh, quick strike as well, quick strike but that's as well. okay that's that's a bit of a bummer but i mean everything else i mean uh can be definitely yeah. looped yeah, no, saying crunch, I've looped two or three before at like very late combats because it literally just it puts itself back in. And if you have another saying crunch in hand, you just get to cycle it until your discard pile is not big enough. Yeah. But w why I think saying Turles like embodies like a true saying is because they want to take damage. The weaker they like, the more damage they take, the more times they hit battle, like the stronger they become. So yeah. the more utility Turles has as you hit them. So. I'm, so that's why I also don't run that many blocks is because I want to take the damage and have enough discard pile so I can start doing saying crunch. And even if I don't want to get like 
clinch or whatever, whatever I need to get, like whatever's in my discard pile, I have the utility to grab it again. Um, saying diving burst is one that I'm considering taking out. It's been a good gotcha move and catches yeah. people off guard because it's a, it's an energy attack first stages. But the also the kicker is that it costs, and I'm already running uh, two other cost cards. So the main thing I do worry about this deck sometimes is if I'm if I'm also going against a stage beats deck is that I won't have the stages to abuse any of these attacks as well as I want to. But with all my other attacks being no cost, it allows me to, if I enter the combat or they enter on me, the first action I will get stages back because they're going to skip their next action. Mm. So, yeah. So I want to keep that super low. <laughs> I was going to say, probably the stage thing, between the low block count and the stage thing, I think that's probably, I, I see, not to jump too far ahead, but the, on the move mm. makes a lot of sense with that in mind. Not to mention, you know, Turtles just kind of wants attack density and just drawing cards is, is just generally a good way, you know, for that. But Absolutely. Um, well, interesting. And I know we talked about the, the inspection drill kind of already, you know. Um, it was interesting that you put in the interruption and the inspection drill there, but they're essentially are, they, I mean, they both can be attacks. Um, mm -hmm. You don't have suppressive strike in here. I guess you don't really need it with an interruption. No, I don't. Uh, suppressive strike is the one that stops uh, uh, all the, the card. If you, that stops time, right? Yeah, it stops time uh, and combat, and the card effects cannot end combat. Um, okay, yeah, no, saying interruption is so much better because it stays in your hand as an attack, and it's also for the if they try and end effects. Yeah. So like it's it's there sitting, and it doesn't vanish after use. It's it's styled like it's perfect. That I, I treat that card as an attack. I don't consider I consider the power and after thing. Yeah. Well, it's, it's there to keep staying in combat and same with inspection drill that's just util utilization with the mastery and if i ever drop back crash into inspection drill that combo is super nice um drop you said drop so you, uh oh like no if yeah if, if i ever in, get entered on and i drop back crash and inspection drill like it's oh, perfect yeah. oh yeah draw so. them yep with the mastery sure um, I was going to say the one thing I noticed with the back crash is you don't really have that many rejuvenation effects. I think the only one you really have is the mastery. I don't think there's any other ones that I noticed. Mm -hmm. I don't um, because I can't fit it. Yeah. So I was just like curious, like how could, I mean, back crash is, I think the best part about it is like the parathetical, like you're saying, I just don't know how consistent like the actual, that's, I mean, like I said, crunch feels like the only way that you can actually get that effect off. Not that it makes back crash bad, mm -hmm. just, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I'm silly. I'm forgetting the discard effect for the crit effect with the attack drill part. That's yeah. what I was like. My mind was just spaced. There. I had to reread because I literally see that card <laughs> as at this point. I only see people use the card for the, the parenthetical, mm -hmm. never for like the active effect, like practically ever. So like that's just why I was like my mind was blanking on it. Then I had to actually like read the card. Mm -hmm. uh, but well, that's interesting. I do see. Um, the stare down over the sphere, which is interesting, given that you just yeah. want to be able to enter combat and throw an attack for the skip, and then uh, I'll say the my other my other thing was some of the board cards. But why okay. stare down over sphere? Do you just really just is it just because you want to hit so bad, or like? Um, I do want to hit so bad, and it also protects me from the from like just regular physical blocks or any other card in your hand that could just completely disrupt my flow. So I'd rather the control over stopping you from doing stuff because I can stare down any card I want. I can only sphere events. Yeah. So I would rather, I would rather enter, enter combat stare down. And if you got the sphere, then that's out of the way and you may have time, but that's fine. Like I want to be able to just keep, keep that flow going of just constantly entering combat. So if the, the time I expect every game i have to have a time combat so i'm just prepared for that and i would rather the potential to just stare down the time get it immediately in the discard pile and out of the way than having a sphere that i can't do anything with unless they use an event on me that i'm actually like worried about yeah so that's why i chose stare down over sphere and the battle pausing is the other one um <laughs> that, card, that card's good that card is really good because you know time is discarded after use and so is stare down. So like if you ever 
draw time and battle pausing you time and then you immediately battle pausing to get no, it back no. <laughs> um it gets you back any like any of these cards that don't discard after use you can get saying headbutt twice like you can get back diving burst the the reward is much better than like your opponent getting five stages like that's fine because you're de you expect your attacks to be doing way more than 10 stages so you're going to be getting crit you're going to be lowering them down to zero battle pausing is such an amazing card for like pure rush down like yeah combat heavy decks yeah you it, know i have a hard time i like i like the card like when i used to run it but now i have such a hard time like it's like kind of like quake Nistro where it's just like it's not like a plus one it's just like a filter so i have a hard mm -hmm. time like working it into decks when i'm just more shooting for like pure synergy um but i kind of feel mm -hmm. like given the current sand card pool um at least for the attacks, there's really only so many attacks you can run. And again, if you don't want to run the freestyle attacks where like Napa would get more mileage out of versus Turles, you know, there's it doesn't really feel like you have many good options for True. attacks. Um, so I can see how this card yeah. could be fit in here. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to abuse all the attacks that you have because they're all just staying in the discard pile. And even then, while I'm taking damage, I want to be taking damage because I could be in a very bad combat. I have battle pausing in hand and I may eventually discard time. Yeah. So it's 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 good for defensive, offensive. Like the battle pausing is an all around good card if you're just looking to constantly filter your hand. That's why my my uh attack card count is so high compared to my other cards that I can't use in combat count. Yeah. So I just want to keep entering and keep attacking. So we'll move on to the non combats here. Uh you run eight, which is a lot in my mind. Um, I remember seeing an earlier okay. build of yours, and I think you only had like a moment of pieces, like your only like non combat card or something like that. But um, yeah. you have Saint Arrival is the most interesting card. Like how have, how has that performed for you when you've used it? Like what do you think about that card? Because I used to like that card back in like set three empowered Vegeta, uh, because mm -hmm. Black Crown was just a pain in the butt. So it was uh, Knowledge Piccolo, and you didn't have good board hate. So how has like Arrival been working for you? Rival works amazing. I'm I'm like honestly surprised I like skipped over this card whenever I like thought more about what it actually does. It saying Arrival completely keeps the game in your momentum. If you if you do happen to go against the board decks, like it's there to scare them. It forces them to enter combat to protect their board, and they may not have a good hand. So on you, you get to draw and like filter yourself out again. Mm-hmm. And then once once that combat that they didn't want to enter is over, it goes back to you. And then you just enter combat again. They could be at zero cards, low stages or whatever, because they entered because they had to enter with a risky hand that they didn't want to, but they would rather enter than lose their board and banish too. Yeah. So Saiyan Arrival is an amazing card. I hope to draw it on defense most of the time, like just because it forces your opponent. If they don't run any board or are just as rushed down heavy as you are then they still just have to banish to yeah like so there's and there's an advantage either way to that card it it just forces your opponent to enter combat so that's why i have that card that card is so amazing i really wish uh, it was, i really wish it wasn't limit two that's what i always wish when, I, when it came, since it came out i always wished it was limit three personally i kind of see how it would be too good but no one's really run it and saiyan it depending on like which saiyan mp you're running you already have enough board hate so yeah. I have to. Uh... Okay, yeah. Well, I was like reading the thing. I forgot if it uh, makes you banish your board as well. If it was like an immediate, like you have to banish two cards, but it says you may banish up to two. So that's actually pretty nice. You can oh, actually, yeah. you could actually smack your own cards. Not that you'd really want to. I can't think of a. Hmm. I can't think of any effect that like Saiyan gets. They don't have like a red controlled anger esque effect. But um, mm -hmm. no, really cool card though. Another cool card. Um... I know you've made a video about your deck list was the moment of peace as well. Um, I'm curious, mm -hmm. you know, that card, and, and well, I guess recovery too, I guess I'll talk about both of those cards if you'd like. I mean, both those cards essentially replace themselves, which is, which is nice about them. Um, but I yes. feel like re is recovery maybe similar esque of like stare down where it's just like kind of worth losing the momentum, you know, of like, you know, you don't get the skip. You don't get the skip, but you get the knowledge, which comes in more handy sometimes because you know what they have to block and what they're going to be 
either leaving combat with or entering the next one with. Mm -hmm. So sand recovery is useful for that. And the endurance four, I can't tell you how many times that has saved me a good chunk of damage. So, um, and the fact that it draws, it's, it's a good card all around. It sucks to draw three on defensive or even two or whatever, but it's going to happen with that deck. And that's why I want the oppressive mastery to, for the hand filtering. That's why I decided to take it, be a little bit riskier and try running more non-combat cards because Turles does need that little extra bit of utility to make his package work because Moment of Peace is also there because of board hate. Mm. Board, board is the hardest part about uh, is what Turles struggles to fight against, mainly allies and drills. So I want to have Moment of Peace as that option to as just one option to stop um, the opponent from getting stuff on the board, even if it's just for one combat, it's fine because as as my motto of just entering every combat, I want to be draw a moment of peace so that I can draw it. And if I draw like say an inspection drill with moment of peace, then I do mastery, get another card, disc discard inspection drill, get another card. Yeah. So it it's it's perfect for the hand filtering aspect of it. And it's just there for board control, which is the main kicker that I'm like trying to figure out what to change about this deck yet. Yeah, uh, Wolf, I was going to notice. Wolf was the only other card that I have for board control, but I just think it's like really good either way. It's got endurance and it's not vanish, vanish after use. Yeah. Um, I was going to say one. Okay, so like first off, I mean, we'll go back. So now we'll kind of go back. Uh, I I see drills as being a really problem and allies being really problematic. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, I mean, maybe not so much allies with massacre, but like especially drills because I don't think you have any. I think there's. The only card that kills a drill in your deck, I think, is Arrival. Arrival and Wolf, that's it. A Wolf, yep, there's the one of Wolf. Mm-hmm. I've, I've been, like, back and forth of putting Saiyan Sabotage into my deck, honestly. I I know that card's kind of bad, but the yeah. board the board hate and the damage, like, five stages impossible board hate, it, for, it forces your opponent to block that, maybe. Um... So... It, but it, it's useless against non-board decks. Yeah, so. I'm like, there's really... One card I really like is Sane Energy Focus. Uh, the only problem with it is potentially turning off your clench. Yes, it so. choose any. you have to choose three, so you're getting your clench turned off would not be good. And it doesn't. it's already only like three life, and it doesn't get much clench support damage, so max it can do is seven. Yeah. So I'd rather not run that and just try and run the cards that actually like get it off the board. And also that's why I have the one of say in targeting it's helped me get through like a lot of drills with infinite powers or like heavy orange decks that just like keep getting modifier buffs or anything like that. Yeah, that um, is, that, that's definitely, definitely a card that like I never see used mm -hmm. practically ever. Um, yeah, because most Saiyans are trying to hop levels, but yeah, Charles is sticking on level one. For sure. Yeah, Saiyan targeting is a is a good one of, and that was like that yeah, that was actually one of the only other non combat cards that I ran in my first build. But yeah, this is my current Turles build, just trying my best to like figure out what needs to be put in. Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah, the blocks. We got to talk about the blocks. Time and then on the move for the yep. draw support and also for the stage attacks. It either gives me stages or keeps my opponent losing stages so it's an absolutely perfect card oh and then also the stop for the pass effect because i don't because i don't want to lose combat yeah i mean there's not too many decks that are gonna nail you with the the pass part of it the uh the cancel of the pass but i don't run any style blocks because they don't do anything for the deck yeah there's some that like buff stage attacks or makes your opponent skip an action but then what? So I'd rather just have all mm -hmm. attacks and the low risk of drawing blocks that aren't going to do much for me and what the deck is trying to do. It's a one-trick pony. It's entirely stage beats. It's entering every combat. It's playing off the entire luck factor that this game has at times. So, like, if I win the roll and I draw well, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, we've uh, we've had many patches uh, as such where it be becomes, uh, did you draw a block? Mm -hmm. So... Uh, yeah, no, interesting. I mean, I think the most interesting part about the deck is the board choices. Um, targeting included in that 
and also the battle pausing. I think that's those are the two things that for me are really just the most like flavorful, I suppose, and maybe your approach. As far mm-hmm. as like the attack lineup goes, like I said, I just I would maybe personally experiment. I think I've like experimented with like Android Armbreaker, but again, like Trellis is just like really, really craving that unpreventable that's, damage. Well, this yeah, yeah, the style synergy. So let's say, you know, so this the filming of this right now is is prior to the the new level two that we're supposed to get in movie collection three. So let's say if the new movie collection three level two is to come out, do you could you see yourself trying to make a, like a leveling build with maybe more freestyle attacks, maybe like unleashed or like I'll dig a grave to bump yourself up to level two, um, or like uh, just running maybe a few more of like the anger sand cards perhaps. I may throw an Unleashed or two in there because that's also support for Clinch. It helps me get it. Mm -hmm. But if I decide that I don't like that one, then I'll probably just go back to Old Turles Level 2. The main reason I like Old Turles Level 2 at times is because, yeah, it loses the preventable damage, but it also gives you uh, the anger and crit effects, uh, possibly. So that's just more attacks for your opponent to block them. And depending on certain matchups, like maybe Dragon Ball matchups or... Yeah, maybe, yeah, just Dragon Ball or, like, if you're trying to, like, crit away, crit away some allies, then I'd rather try going for Trillus Level 2. I, I haven't put... I, the problem is that I'd never want to level with this deck. I'm comfortable just sitting at level 1, but having the new level 2 will be nice in the way that I just don't have to worry. The The anger support is not really there, and I it can kind of be, because if your opponent's not dealing too much damage to you, you're getting the skip effects, so like Gut Kick and Crunch are both free anger cards. And I don't know, I've never I've never actually leveled myself. Like Yeah. The skip effect does give me a bit of anger sometimes, but usually my opponent will be critting it away half the time if they deal with crits because there's nothing else on my board to crit. So I I'll have the new level two as just a backup sake, but I don't expect to ever get there unless my opponent brings me up yeah i will say the one thing the only issue if like you were to run unleashes is it's like unleash is an, is not an attack so mm-hmm. if anything i would look at it as like a block in my mind that like hey i get to replenish 10 stages and i do and then currently like that it's projected that that level two is just going to have uh is going to have a crit when you reach it all attacks are yeah. unpreventable two stages so again it might change based off uh, after this but uh you, mm-hmm. you, you don't have the momentum, and I feel like this deck is just so super, super focused on the momentum. So perhaps uh, like a Rampaging Turles would be more of the route if you were to use that two, um, the mm-hmm. new two, or something like that. I think that would be maybe the better choice. But it could be an option, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Probably just different. It would be a very different variant than this, though. Yeah. Um, the other like main cards that I'm like worried about changing, I honestly... Might try and find a way to take out Stomach Thrust and maybe Diving Burst. Just for other cards that may do better stuff. Might try and put in Saiyan Sabotage. Who knows? But mm. I, I, I like Stomach Thrust at times because it has been really cute. And if I can stack it, then that's a mil six if you try and bring out a drill. Yeah. No, I've... The, the destroy effect on it has always been something that I've like eyed up. Like I've wanted to figure out a way to abuse it. But it's just like... I don't know. You don't want your yeah. You don't want your opponent to have a board it's in like any a, way. So. It, yeah, it, it's kind of it also kind of is like between that and moment of peace, like those two don't combo with each other. But I guess ultimately, like it's like I kind of do like they, in in a sense that they do work in duality. It's like okay, well if you do end up actually bringing board out, there's a good chance that either like you're gonna mill three, you know, versus you know, or you just can't do it because of moment of peace. So. I'd rather have more options than not just to just to stop drills or like anything else from getting out on the board. So Yeah. Yeah, I mean so we'll just uh the closing things here. I'll, I'm gonna make a couple of comments a few more comments about what I think about the deck, but how what have been like your matchups like, you know, what are your bad and good matchups here? Um my bad matchups mainly have been uh Dragon Ball decks. I've struggled with Majin Buu a lot. And God, what? I... Oh, I know this deck would probably like absolutely lose to any Gohan build, just because of Gohan's ability to level hop and everything. 
And the only other one I can think of may actually no, not even Vegito because unless you're running Unleash Build, it doesn't help too much. Um, Goku's been a little bit of a problem sometimes, depending on how well the Goku can level hop. And then the only styles that I'm like really worried about are orange just because of the drill support. And yeah, those are my definitely my worst matchups. My best matchups are usually anything else. And as long as I draw well, <laughs> because yeah. no, because I've had interruptions before where I like wouldn't I've game have games before where I wouldn't even get clinch out or we get destroyed early on. Even with even with against Janemba, I can get pretty close uh, in some games to just killing him. So like even if I even if the deck doesn't get clinch out, it still has enough. It helps does enough attacks to just keep going in and like just keep attacking as long as you're never letting up. You will get that it you will have the lead in your favor throughout most of the game. So like other beatdown decks, like state like bo stasis decks that don't like have enough like allies or block support, like I I can do really well against those because they have a higher chance of drawing dead hands mm -hmm. than I do. So like on board I, blockers, for example, is what yeah. Yeah. So anything it's pretty much like board just board. Just generally yeah. board board and dragon balls. Mm -hmm. Um assuming that they get the board set up. Yeah, so usually my good matchups are just based on luck. If I win the win the coin toss and draw well, if I draw clinch or battle pausing or grab or inspection drill, like I'm already in a good lead. So. Yeah. So we talked about the styled answers for the board with the, with that with the mat, bad matchup uh, uh, stated out. We we talked about the styled answers of kind of like not really being there and kind of being like low. Um, mm -hmm. have you considered like running like villainous empowerments and like ultimate sacrifice and um one build of this I did try squeezing in ultimate sacrifice, but I haven't drawn it and it hasn't done anything for me yet. But I kind of like the three endurance and even if they have a board, it just shuts it off. Yeah. So it's it's a cute card for that and it gives you the draw, but it's it seems kind of risky. I'm still trying to play around with it. Um, Villainous Empowerment, it doesn't get me anything. Yeah. Because I, I don't run a style drill that I want out. I never want an inspection drill out on the uh, out on the board. And it doesn't give me an attack. The endurance is nice, but again, it doesn't do what the deck is like trying to do at the end of the day. Because I've also had the games where I've just had to tolerate a burning aura drill throughout most of the game. Yeah, yeah. But I was able to like just keep combats going and just keep entering to where my first attack wouldn't matter half the time. Mm. And then another thing, combat ending. I think combat ending mm. would be really good. I mean, combat ending is usually I can't build an impressive deck without trying to run combat ending. Um, yeah. It feels like you just get stuck. It feels like you can definitely dump your hand and get stuck in combat, and then you're just kind of at the mercy. Mm hmm. Um. As far as like myself leaving combat, I've thought about trying to finding ways to put in. Like maybe Earthball Seven or Blinding, but that would just be what what attack cards am I not getting enough out of to where I would just want to do these attacks and then in combat and just get out as soon as I can. Yeah. So finding that, finding those like good combat enders, isn't like too feasible because uh the Saiyan um the one that lim the new one that came out that if your opponent hasn't performed an action then uh, shattering blow in, yeah. com in combat i mean it's nice but you just have to hope it's not on it's not whenever you get entered on or else you have to hold on to that card and like risk if you draw a better hand and you're like oh i really want to go in and use all these cards then you can't because you don't utilize the skip effect entirely so it's not a good card to hold on to or draw on defense so yeah the only ones i would consider are blinding and ball seven to add for combat injures hmm. well, very interesting i i don't know if you have any cl any closing uh comments you just want to make about the deck otherwise uh... uh um no it's it's a deck based on luck <laughs> that's all it is so just draw better <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Well, thank you, Axel. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody watching, I mean, again, like, uh, so this is, again, filmed before Movie Collection 3, so there could be some more support coming out. We'll have to see what happens. But 
again, I really appreciate you coming in and showing this list. I think Travis is one of those MPs that I think people definitely discount, but then he'll, you know, flip your deck over two combats randomly and you don't know what mm -hmm. happened. So mm -hmm. um, I definitely think that you're right. He definitely plays in the lock factor, which is a lot of the reason why I think people are kind of pulled away from him. Mm -hmm. But you've definitely had some consistent success with this uh, with this MP and this combination specifically. So yeah, it's very commendable. I just got I just got some lucky games, man. What can I say? <laughs> yeah. Well, as always, I'm gonna just kind of end the video with if anybody else would like to have a build of theirs kind of highlighted through the build beauties, or if you'd like to you know just kind of talk more about the game, uh, by all means, shoot me a message uh, either over Facebook or YouTube. And I hope you guys really enjoy the content. Uh, it was a lot of fun interviewing everybody that I do for these uh, different videos, and I love to always you know be involved in the community. Take it easy, guys.